And it starts with a basic idea of concrete, which is very, very flowable. And use that one material to build very, very tall. And what is concrete made of? Well, it's 10% of its cement, a gray black powder. Then it's got gravel and sand, and then about 18 to 20% water. And you combine those materials together, and it hardens over 7 to 28 days, and it becomes a very, very strong material, which allows us to build very, very tall. I love this photo because you got the burge, an ad for the burge painted on a 50-story building, and a bird flying by. <laughs> burge is actually Arabic for tower. So when I say the burge to buy tower, I'm just being redundant. Here you can see, looking up, the concrete system. But if you're up at the top of the forms, at the very top during construction, they put this sign up there. The reason they put that sign up there is that's the view looking down. Someone asked in the previous talk if people get seasick. I hope you don't get air sick. <laughs> but actually, if you're at the top of these forms, you don't feel the height anymore. This is actually surreal to the human condition. It's almost like aircraft height, like you're looking out the window of an aircraft, looking down at all these buildings. Again, looking down from the crane. No, that's not my rental car. <laughs> now, you look at this building, you go, you know, it almost looks like a spike going up into the sky. And I've given presentations, and some children have said, you know, I'm learning about Benjamin Franklin, and he discovered, you know, invented the lightning rod to protect buildings by putting a spike on top of their buildings. This kind of looks like a spike in the whole city. So unknowingly, you know, thinking ahead, figuring maybe lightning can happen, you know, may hit the building sometime, we've actually electrically connected all the conduit, uh, the rebar all the way down the building, connected all the cladding for side strikes, just in case it gets hit by lightning. Well, it got hit a, about a month or two ago in a storm. Surprise to us. Didn't just get hit once. It didn't even just get hit three times. It got pummeled. It took all the lightning from across the whole town and came out scarched free. You know, and it's a lot of people building it. It's all about prestige when people are working on projects like this, as my son's working on his Legos over there. If you enjoy building, this is really a profession you want to get into. It's really exciting. And imagine the view from your workspace. I like this guy. He is tied off, though, for safety. And that's the view looking down. This building's so tall, if you live in the top of this building, you have to call down to find out if it's raining. <laughs> That's not Photoshop. That's real. This is the team from Skidmore, and Merrill that worked on the project. Architects, mechanical engineers, structural engineers. Uh, I didn't get the memo that way. They wear a dark jacket. Um, but I love about this shot is you've got Burge photoshopped into the Chicago skyline. Is that much taller than the uh, spirit? Significantly. This isn't a case of one footmanship. Which kind of brings me to the conclusion of my talk. Building is human nature. It's something that's inherent in what we do. We strive to reach for the sky. Thank you very much. At this point, I'm going to open it up to questions. Yes, right there. Um, the planned opening date is some random number date, 09, 09, 09. So they're working on the interiors as we speak. Okay. okay. 
An earthquake is really the ground motion going back and forth. And so we're modeling that here. <laughs> he's willing it to stand with his hand. <laughs> That's the same look I see on him when he's playing video games, when he's tipping to make the thing go better. <laughs> I think we've got, whoa, they got the table going. Come over here, Alex. Let Bob get a picture. Take your hands out of here. I think the table's going to fail. <laughs> what? Certainly not to that relative magnitude, but the idea is that tall buildings are able to flex and absorb the energies that way. Yeah, power down. That's a very good question. Where, where is the maximum highest point of stress? It actually is, depends on the frequency of the base isolation of the earthquake. At low speeds, it's down at the base of the building. But as you notice in high speeds, it tends to move up the base of this building as it goes into second and third modes, And which is one of the nice things about a tall building. They have the additional modes that can absorb the energy. Very good question. Obviously, someone who knows about resonance. Um, without then further ado, I'll thank you very Oh, wait, one more question? Sorry. Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, Time-wise, didn't get like, a chance to us. It's a very um, sustainable green building. Um, how many people in here have flown in airplanes? Well, you ever notice when you go up in an airplane, it actually gets colder and colder outside? And we, you know, the Burge is in a desert, so you need to cool the building. And as you, what we found is from the base of the building to the top of the building is a 12 degree Fahrenheit reduction in te temperature. So to, for the air in the building, we take it from the top of the building, which is already cool, and use that for the rest of the building. We don't have to cool it as much. And by doing that, we have a 20% saving in sensible cooling for the building, just by where we took the air. And there's many other aspects. We collect all the condensate from the cooling units in the units, and we use that to water the landscape. It's equivalent to 15 Olympic pools of water that we can collect each year. Little drops that would normally have gone to waste. So a lot of things done for green building and sustainability. I'm actually a, a lead accredited professional for green buildings. Thank you very much. We do a whole presentation on that another time.